A 46-year-old man with a history of chronic headaches attributed to migraines with visual aura presented with worsening left-sided pulsatile tinnitus and increasing severity and frequency of his headaches. MRI of the brain with contrast demonstrated dilated vessels within the left parieto-occipital lobe with communication with the left transverse sinus. There was no evidence of associated flare signal change, nor was there any evidence of prior hemorrhage. Diagnostic cerebral arteriogram showed a complex dural arteriovenous fistula with multiple feeding vessels from the left external carotid artery, including branches off of the left occipital artery and middle meningeal artery. There was also supply to the fistula from the posterior circulation from hypertrophic posterior meningeal arteries arising from the bilateral vertebral arteries. Additionally, the artery of Bernasconi and Cossinari off the left internal carotid artery provided further supply to the complex fistula. The fistula's pouch appeared to run parallel to the transverse sinus on the left. There did not appear to be any evidence of outflow restriction involving the left sigmoid sinus and internal jugular vein. Of critical importance, there was evidence of retrograde drainage of the fistula directly into cortical veins with evidence of venous congestion classifying this as a malignant type 3 fistula with a high rate of neurologic deficit, hemorrhage, and potential for mortality if left alone. The patient was offered endovascular treatment of the fistula. Stage 1 embolization was undertaken using a transarterial approach involving the left external carotid artery. The patient was fully heparinized. Using an intermediate catheter for support, a microwire was navigated through an onyx-compatible catheter into the posterior branch of the middle meningeal artery. Onyx-18 was injected through the microcatheter. Careful attention was paid to ensure that the onyx-18 penetrated into the fistulous pouch. A post-embolization angiography run showed that we were able to partially embolize the fistula. We decided to stop at this point and perform a later, second-stage embolization procedure in order to decrease the chance of a postoperative complication from overaggressive embolization. Stage 2 embolization occurred approximately four weeks after the first stage. We undertook a transarterial approach, once again involving the left external carotid artery branches. The patient was fully heparinized. Using an intermediate catheter for support, we navigated a microwire through a dual lumen, onyx compatible balloon catheter into a branch of the occipital artery. With the balloon inflated to prevent reflux and to enhance the potential for the onyx to penetrate into the fistula, we were able to further embolize the fistula with onyx 18. Following this, a run through our catheter confirmed that we were able to further partially embolize the fistula. We noted a significant supply to the fistula from a more proximal branch off the occipital artery. This pedicle was challenging to catheterize owing to its significant tortuosity. Despite using various microwire and microcatheter combinations, we were only able to achieve a proximal position of our microcatheter within the branch. However, we noted that the microcatheter appeared to be wedged within the pedicle with no evidence of contrast reflux on the superselective angiogram. Given the findings of the superselective angiogram, we thought that the likelihood of onyx being able to penetrate into the fistula with such a proximal catheter position was low. On the other hand, we felt that these same factors made the use of NBCA as a liquid embolic agent ideal in this situation. We used a 2 to 1 mixture of a thiodol to NBCA and concomitantly pushed D5 water through our intermediate catheter to allow for the NBCA to push out more distally. A control angiography run following embolization with NBCA demonstrated complete obliteration of the complex malignant fistula with restoration of normal cortical venous drainage.